The incident, the 44th Pacific Islands Forum officially wrapped up in Majuro last week with development partners pouring in funds for climate change action and regional programs. At the end of the post-forum dialogue meeting between development partners, the United States, which flew in a delegation headed by Secretary of Interior Sally Jewell, announced its new Pacific American Climate Fund. Here's Secretary Jewell during a press conference in Majuro. We know you are particularly vulnerable here. Over the past 20 years, the rates of sea level rise in the western equatorial Pacific have been the highest in the world. You've seen an increased frequency of droughts, certainly this year, and the intensity of storms has increased in certain parts of the Pacific. And like I saw in Alaska, this has implications for food and water security, human health, ecosystems, and cultural traditions that are so important uh, to the people of the Marshall Islands and throughout the Pacific. As I mentioned this morning, President Obama has made combating climate change a top priority for his administration. And in June, I was very proud to see him release his climate action plan. It outlines a comprehensive steps forward to reduce carbon pollution, both at home and internationally. At home, in the United States, this means addressing greenhouse gas pollution from power plants, doubling our national renewable energy and uh, electricity productivity, and reducing our carbon pollution by at least 3 billion metric tons cumulatively by 2030. As Secretary, part of my job is to boost renewable energy production on our public lands. We have major installations in solar energy, in wind energy, in geothermal, both onshore and offshore in the Outer Continental Shelf. On public lands and waters, that strengthen our natural landscapes and address uh, our, our, the importance of uh, energy for our economic future. The United States has made significant progress in recent years, reducing our emissions by almost 7% since 2005. But we need to do more. And we take seriously the commitment that we made in Copenhagen to reduce our emissions in the range of 17% below 2005 levels by 2020. The President's plan notes that it's a global challenge that requires a global solution. We're all in this together, whether we like it or not. The Climate Action Plan underscores the importance of collective action, including through UN negotiations. We need all countries, in particular all major economies, to take ambitious actions. I'm impressed impressed by efforts in this region to understand and address these impacts, including through integration of disaster risk reduction and climate adaptation programs. So I'm very pleased to note that we're announcing today a new Pacific American Climate Fund that's uh, going to be administered through the USAID, where support will be provided to the Pacific small island developing states with a focus on adaptation. Mobilizing climate finance is an important objective for the United States. All right, and in addition, China's special envoy made an announcement And in addition to the $32.6 million international cooperation project for clean energy, China will provide additional assistance to the Pacific Islands Forum Secretariat, the Pacific Islands Trade and Invest, and to the Pacific Regional Environment Program. Along with the two big developed nations, Papua New Guinea, through Prime Minister Peter O'Neill, announced a special regional assistance program with various island nations. O'Neill announced a $1 million grant assistance to help the Marshall Islands with forum costs, as well as to respond to the drought disaster in the northern parts and the recent flooding in Majuro. Post-forum dialogue concluded on September 6th, wrapping up this year's forum.